Welcome to Passion to Purpose. My name is Marina. I'm a creative and an entrepreneur. Here, I will be co-creating conversations with like-minded and like-hearted individuals on topics that may serve you in your journey towards a higher level of self-awareness and a more fulfilling life. And who doesn't want that? So listen in. So yeah, first of all, a super warm welcome. Um, because I, I mean, it's it's a bit strange because anytime I spoke to you, it was always from a place of um, seeking guidance or seeking healing or seeking wisdom. And um, this is the first time that we uh, come together with like a different intention. Um, and then we have goosebumps, as I say. Um, I don't know, it makes me feel a little bit nervous because as I said to you before, like I, yes, I look up to you in many ways, not just um, because of what you know, but also the way you carry yourself, like you are such a caring person. And um, I also feel like in many ways we have a similar wiring, like, I see you as someone who has a lot of integrity and I don't know, a lot of respect. And I really appreciate that about you. And um, yes, I'm just really excited to hear all the things you feel called to share um, on the topics that you feel inspired to talk about. And um, oh yeah, maybe I should say, um, may I invite you to um, introduce yourself and your work and your relationship to your faith. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Yeah, I think we've been connected for a while now, which the gift of like a longer term connection like that is you get to see somebody go through development, their changes, their their journey, right? We're on a journey together because we've known each other for a while. And so You've been here for a lot of stages of evolution in my business and in my personal beliefs, and that's really powerful. So and for anyone who doesn't know me who's listening, my name is Dana, and you can find me on Instagram at Love Faith Money. I also have uh, uh, another Instagram called Thrive with Dana. So I... I have been in business for about seven years and I've been running everything completely online and I've changed a lot in that time. And this is one of the gifts of entrepreneurship, I think, is that it's a journey of self-discovery. It's a journey of getting to know yourself. It's a journey of learning all of your own patterns and seeing certain things reflected back to you. So it's a gift in that way. But what I do is I help people who want to have online businesses or already have online businesses who are wanting to create something that's really in integrity with the truth of their authentic expression, in integrity with their value system, to create thriving, prosperous online businesses through their own authentic self-expression, through unleashing their voice, through strategic marketing. I do a lot of marketing strategy. And we also do a lot of healing work together. I'm certified in clinical hypnotherapy and neuro-linguistic programming. So a lot of what we do together is also healing work so that we can deepen our relationship with God and bring that into our business. So that's a little bit of a snippet of me, <laughs> a little bit of insight. <laughs> <laughs> wow, there are so many, so many layers to you. Um, but um, yeah, there's just so many layers to you. But um, I um, would be also interested and uh, grateful to hear about the different stages of your spiritual journey. I mm -hmm. think it would be educational for me and for everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So I have had this experience where most entrepreneurs who I talk to, most people who have kind of made a really big, bold decision to take the risk of starting their own business, there's usually this moment that is a catalyst for them where something happens, whether it's, you know, 
the death of a loved one or a separation or a health diagnosis, there's something that shakes them and makes them realize like, oh, I need to change my life in some way. I need to break free of this monotonous way of being or whatever it is. There's usually this moment that cracks them open. And so for me, that moment happened in 2018. And I had lived a good life up until that point. Um, I went to church when I was young with my grandpa. And so I had been introduced to God at a really young age. But like many of us, I had also struggled with the world. And for a long time, I was off the path of my relationship with God. And I identified as an atheist. I didn't have a relationship with God. I didn't believe that God was real. And when I met my ex-husband, that's the path that I was on. And that's the path that he was on too. And our relationship was very, um, God was in it. I can see God's hand in it now, but God was not at the center because neither of us were focused on that. And so I was very lost in my identity my identity was very attached to him and his success and who he was. And I didn't really have a deep sense of self or my own values. I was kind of, and that comes from some of the trauma that happened to me before going into that relationship, which had nothing to do with him. That's just where I was when I met him. And over the course of a, of a seven year period that accumulated in me being diagnosed with depression and anxiety, having a really horrible relationship with my body, experiencing such bad social anxiety that I often wouldn't leave my house unless I was on some form of substance to cope with that anxiety, on medication for my anxiety and depression, completely numb. Like it definitely helped with the anxiety and depression in the sense that I really didn't feel anything. And I was going back to therapy and I just had this moment where I was like, my relationship is falling apart. I am having thoughts about not, not wanting to even exist anymore. I am completely numb and floating through life and something has to change because the way that my life is going right now is not sustainable. There's, this is not going to take me down a path that I want to, that leads to a place where I want to go. And that was when I decided I was going to do something about it. I quit my job. I started exploring personal development and self-help for the first time. And really that came from a place of just being like ravenous for, for a new way, ravenous to change my life, ravenous to just get away from the pain that I was experiencing. It wasn't like I was seeking God in that. It wasn't like I was like, oh, I'm going to find God in this. It was more like, I just need to be saved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's how so many of us come back to God and, you know, the topic of pain and suffering is complex. And a lot of people feel like, why would um, a good God allow such pain and suffering in this world? But I don't think I would have come back home to God if I had not been in pain and suffering, if I had not gone through such a complex journey that allowed me to see things from a new perspective. So sometimes, like, I believe our God is wildly unsettling. He and he is wildly unsettling because if we are in a comfort zone and we're okay with being in our comfort zone, we're never going to leave it. But God doesn't call us to comfort. God has greater will for our lives. And so that was the first time that I started to even explore like, oh, maybe I am here on purpose. Maybe there is a reason for my existence that's beyond surviving, like you said. That's beyond just trying to get by and make money, beyond just trying to pay the bills, beyond like maybe I have a greater purpose. And that year, I went through a divorce. My husband and I separated. 
I flushed my medication down the toilet. That is not medical advice because obviously anyone who's listening, if you're on mental health medication, that's just the path that I took. And it was against my doctor's advice. But for me, I had a deep calling to get off my medication and to actually feel. I knew in order to heal, I was going to have to really feel everything that I was numbing myself out on. I stopped doing drugs. I stopped drinking alcohol and I bought a one-way ticket with less than $200 in my bank account and nothing but a suitcase. I downsized my entire life to a suitcase and I got on a plane and I started my journey of like, what does this mean? What is the meaning of life? What, what is my purpose in this world? Like, what, like everything kind of had to blow up and self-destruct in order to start asking myself these questions. And it, in it, like at that moment in my life, it was like, this is the worst thing ever. Why is this happening to me? But in hindsight, it's the best thing that happened to me because I can't even fathom where I would be if I had continued on that path of self-destruction. And Eventually, I started to talk about the universe and consciousness and source. And I was still very scared to think about or talk about or say the word God, say his name, because I had my own experiences with religion and the idea of religion. And I know that this is something that we've like lightly touched on where it's like, Sometimes you want to reject that because there's so much that has been done or said in the name of religion that just is clearly not of God. That is is actually really harmful. And so I had a strong rejection to the idea or the concept of God because I then was like, well, that would make me religious. And if I'm religious, then I'm falling into this doctrine and this like conditioning. And I don't want that. And over a, a several year period, this wasn't instantaneous. This I just want to clarify this happened over a period of years. This was a journey. So I'm really summarizing a journey that took years. But I went into New Age spirituality and I found some freedom there because I started to self-reflect and I started to become more self-aware and I started to see my patterns and I started to be able to look back on my life with a little bit more peace where it was like, oh, I can resolve this guilt. I can resolve this shame. So there was value there. I won't say it was invaluable, but there was also a lot of darkness and there was a lot of, there was, I was playing in a realm with with now I recognize demons and spirits that did not necessarily have my best interest at heart. And so while I had broken free in a lot of ways, I was also still trapped in a lot of ways. And the indicators sorry. like what that oh yeah. Sorry Dana, could you elaborate on that part um on the spirit and darker aspect? Because even that's something that always um I don't know, it's a question mark in my mind. Mm-hmm. Mm. So this is going to take take us a little bit into my current belief system, which I'll just say with clarity for anyone who's listening. I am Christian. I believe in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I believe our God is a Trinitarian God. He's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But he is only one God. And that all other gods are false idols, which I, I, I mean, I have false idols literally tattooed on my body. So there, there was a period of time where I was very, and I know you, you asked me this question, I believe, Marina, where you said, like, do you believe in other spiritual leaders, like Gandhi, for example? And my belief system now is that there is only one God that Jesus Christ is our, our one and only savior. He was, he was the Messiah who came and died on the cross for our sins and he saved us. And he, we entered into a new covenant with him when that happened, that is separate from the old Testament covenant that he made with Israel. 
And so that's my belief system now. So with that current belief system, what I recognize and how I look at what was happening to me in new age spirituality is different because it's through the lens of my Christianity. Mm -hmm. So my, like, I believe in the spirit, right? I believe in the Holy spirit and I believe we all have the Holy spirit in us. It's written in the Bible because I believe in the Bible and it's written in the Bible that the Holy spirit was given to us. Um, and what I recognized was happening in new age spirituality is because I was so lost and I was seeking so actively, I was so hungry and I was so desperate for wisdom and for guidance and for somebody to save me from my pain. I went down a path of trusting and putting my faith in people, things, and spirits that did not have my best interest at heart and we're using my energy to for for not good i'll put it that simply so um, for example i used to i used to pull tarot cards i used to do rituals i used to um, i used to do sigils like i did a lot of witchcraft i did a lot of things that are that I believed that I needed to do in order to protect myself energetically or in order to be able to achieve understanding or to achieve enlightenment. And since then, I have realized how that path of uh, belief was actually keeping me stuck because what was happening in my life is I would get this, like I would achieve things, like I'd be manifesting, right? I would do manifestation practices and manifestation rituals, and I would achieve certain things. I would make, you know, I would make the $10,000 that I asked for. I would meet an amazing person and we would fall in love. I would like everything on my manifestation list, I would achieve. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, like life is so amazing. Like now I'm good. Like I did it. Like, wow, I'm so powerful. I'm the creator of my own reality, right? So there was self idolatry there too. Like I'm my creator of my reality. And then a few months later or uh, six months later or a year later, everything would come crashing down and I would find myself in this rock bottom again. And a lot of these paths of teaching teach you that you are the creator of your reality. And so if something is wrong in your reality, it's because you're doing something wrong. You have a money block. You have a love block. You have something wrong with your mindset. You need more positive affirmation. You need to do this ritual or do that ritual. And there, Christianity isn't perfect either, right? So the if you're a christian you might hear something like well you must have done something wrong you must have sinned to be in the position that you're in you must have like done a sin and so god is punishing you in some way and so in in religion it often is like oh well god is punishing you because you did something wrong and in new age manifestation or new age spirituality it's like oh, well, you have a block of some kind that you need to fix, right? Those are the same thing. Those are saying the exact same thing. And neither one of them is accurate. Neither one of them is true. Um, God is not punishing us. We live in a fallen world. We live in a world of, we live in a world where the enemy is very much here and he's very much working as hard. The, the battle is already won. We know the battle is already won because we know what the ending is but the enemy is still here. And to deny that would be ignorant. To deny that would be, it would be childish and foolish to think that there are not things that are working against our eternal salvation. And so with that perspective, I was able to see why I was caught in these patterns where everything would go well and then everything would come crashing down and then when I was at that rock bottom, I'd be like, oh, I have a block. I need to fix it. I have a block. I need to change my mindset. I need more positive affirmations. Like, oh, it's just my scarcity. Oh, it's just this. Be and because of that, I was able to finally break free of those cycles through coming. First, I had to have the revelation. Like, I had to have the revelation that more wasn't going to fix my problem. 
because that's what I believed. That's what I believed in new age spirituality. If I could just manifest more of the things that I wanted, everything would be okay. If I had more money, if I met my soulmate, if I overcame my money, money blocks, if I cre created a thriving business, like if I manifested this life where I was like living in this beautiful villa in some beautiful foreign country that everything was going to be good and I was going to be happy. And I did all of those things and I was still incredibly dissatisfied and incredibly unhappy. And that was my moment where I was like, this is not the path to fulfillment and joy. And true prosperity to me does not mean a certain number in my bank account, does not mean that I can hop on a plane whenever I want, does not mean that I have a relationship that looks good on social media. Like true prosperity and abundance to me is that I am deeply fulfilled and gratified, that I feel deeply loved, that I am living a life full of purpose and passion, and that I am genuinely happy not social media highlight reel happy, not, ooh, I manifested $10,000 happy, not, ooh, look at how great my relationship is on social media because I have a hot partner happy. Ooh, not, ooh, look at me, I'm drinking a coconut on the beach happy. Like genuinely, like, I don't care what anybody else thinks of me. I am happy because I am at peace. And as someone who's been an atheist and been in new age spirituality and has now come home to my to the God that's been pursuing my heart this whole time. And it's so beautiful to look back and like see all the ways that he was pursuing my heart. There's only one, there's only one God that's ever given that to me. And it's been Jesus. You do, I mean, so much love and, and peace actually. I am, um, and yeah, your, your presence like really, really shows that. <coughs> and. Um, um and i'm sorry i know it's more like an interview thing but yeah like i i really i'm interested to really tap your brain <laughs> but for example for someone like me as i'm um i'm really approaching this from like a um how can i say like from a place of like curiosity and growth and openness and wanting to evolve and also from a place of like i really value your input and your not your input but like your opinion um i just wanted to share like one of the things that for me is still like a block when it comes to um actual religion is that i feel like i like having choices <laughs> when i don't know like i and you know like for example how i was um um talking about potentially potentially like gandhi or all the greats that like our society recognizes um i like to have the option that i can learn from different um yeah like like different people who can teach things for me from to me and uh, i think that's like something that um yeah like still creates also like um um a block like i you know what i mean does mm. it make sense mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Like, it feels like you're, if you choose one path, you're, you're closing off other options where there could be value for you. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah and, I understand. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh no. Like, um, did you experience that or for you, it was really like, it really touched you so deeply, like there was no questions when it comes to that or, and, and also I think because I interrupted you, you never got to really um, share. I, I understand like you didn't quite feel um, peace and satisfaction and love in your previous um, spiritual um, lives. Um, but when you stepped into this path, was there like, a specific action or a specific um event that took place or you just genuinely resonated towards finding out more um of christianity mm -hmm. so what happened is i was in the mountains of colombia and i i started to touch on this where i thought that more was the answer and i had been stuck in these cycles of like high low high low and 
I was in a low where I had just like a few months prior, I had been like asking for a certain amount of money and then all of that money came in and I had like a pay in full one-on-one -on -one client that was five figures. And like, then I met this incredible man who ticked all the boxes and was exactly what I thought that I wanted in a partner. And then a few months later, I found myself with no money in my bank account. I had found out that the man that I, that I had been in a relationship with had been cheating on me for our whole relationship. The client who had paid me in full completely ghosted me. So I was in this rock bottom where like everything that I had manifested was gone. And I was like, again, in this rock bottom, which I was very familiar with that cycle. Cause like I said, it wasn't the first time. And I had this moment where I was like, enough. Like, what is going on here? Like, I cannot, like, I basically traded, you know, a life of numbness for a life of like high, low manic yo-yo cycles with like no peace. And I was like, this is not it. Like there's, this is definitely not it. And so I was, I started praying and I, I asked God, I was like, why is this happening to me? And God was very clear with me in those mountains. Like I had to go get really still. I had to remove myself. I had to be alone in the middle of nowhere with nothing but me. This was, this was where I had to go to actually finally hear the voice of God. But when I heard the voice of God, it was so clear for me. And what he said to me was, you keep asking me for more, but you're not even being a good shepherd of what I've already given you. Like you are not taking care of what I have already given you. Go take That's care so of what I've given you. Yes. It was so powerful. It was a monumental moment for me. It changed everything. And that was the moment where I was like, I need to go do the things that I said I was going to do. I keep waiting until I feel good enough by getting validated, by having a certain amount of money, by having a certain type of relationship, by having a certain amount of followers on social media or whatever I was telling myself I needed before I feel ready to go do the things that God is literally calling me to do. I need to go build a better relationship with my family. I need to go settle down and find home. I need to go sow roots of community. I like these are I need to go invest my money in places where it's going to grow. I need to actually look at my bank account and reconcile my taxes and hire this lawyer that I've been talking about. I need to go make peace with my sister. I need to go like there was things in my life that I needed to do that I was ignoring because it was easier to distract myself with, well, I'm going to go manifest 10 K and then I'm going to fly to Bali and then I'm going to make a list of my soulmate and then I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do that. And it was like, no, I like God is literally calling me to be a shepherd of what he has given me in order for like, I don't have capacity for more. I'm praying for more. And then he's like, here, let me give it to you just to show you that you don't actually have the fortitude, the capacity and the strength to hold this because you are built on a foundation of sand. I was not built on the foundation of the rock of my faith. And so I came home. I came home from Columbia. I moved to Texas, which is not where I'm from, but it is where my family is. And my family, I was like, I'm going to go build a relationship with my family. I'm going to stop flying everywhere, trying to run away from my problems. <laughs> I'm going to go in, open up my Roth IRA account. I'm going to hire a lawyer. I'm going to like, there was things that I needed to do to, to build that foundation. And everyone's answer to like, what do I need to do to build that foundation is going to be different. But those were the things I had been ignoring and running away from. And so when I got here, I had been, um, I'd been thinking about going back to church. There was something calling me there, but I had a lot of resistance to it. And then I saw this sign for an event and it said chosen. And that word really stood out to me, chosen. And I was like, wow, what is this? And then it was a women's conference. And I was like, ooh, like a women's conference. And I was like, that's cool. I'm going to go to that. And then I ignored it. And I do what so many of us do. We see a sign and then we're like, yeah, I'm going to do that. And then we ignore it, right? So I ignored it. And a month went by. And then I was driving down the highway with my sister. 
and I saw the sign again. And I said like, oh, that conference, like I should check that out. I'm gonna go to that. And then I didn't do anything. I ignored it and we kept driving. And then I saw it again, literally, like, like 15 minutes later, I saw it again. And God was like, now, now. And I was like, okay. So I opened it up on my phone and it was literally happening that weekend. And I was like, oh, like this is why now, because I'm gonna miss this if I literally don't buy tickets for this now. And so I bought my ticket and I invited like a couple of friends to go with me, but nobody could come. So I was like, okay, I'm going to be going to this by myself. And, and then I realized it was at a church and I realized it was a Christian based women's conference. And I was like, wow. Okay. Okay. So I showed up to this conference. I didn't know anybody there. There was thousands of women. It was a very big conference in a huge mega church. And I, cried the whole weekend and I had an encounter with God that was unlike anything that I've ever experienced before. And I, it's one of those unexplainable things. Like I don't know how to explain it other than my heart was completely cracked open and I was able to see in my life how much I had been pushing away the relationship that God was longing to have with me. And he had been pursuing my heart over and over and over again. And I had been resisting and resisting and resisting. And in that moment, I finally had the humility and the, the weakness to fall to my knees and say, I need you. And that to me is religion, like religion, the root word of religion. If you go to the Latin root word, it means relationship with God. Religion is not a church. A church can be any, the, the word church in Hebrew, it means a gathering of people to worship. That is all it means. It does not mean a place with a steeple. It does not mean a place with stained glass windows. Like a church is any gathering of people to worship. Like you can be in a park, you can be at a river, you could be anywhere. You are in church if you are in a gathering of people to worship. And the root word of religion means relationship with God. That is what religion means. It does not mean you're Presbyterian or you're Catholic or you're, you're non-denominational or you're whatever it is. God, God had a relationship with Jews and Gentiles alike. That's in the Bible. And all it means to be a Gentile is anyone who was not Jewish. That's all that meant at that time period. And God over and over again showed us in the Bible. It doesn't matter what denomination you are. It does not matter. Like you're, if you like, and he showed us too, you can be a religious leader. That was the lesson of the Pharisees in the Bible. He said, you can be the person who everybody is like, oh my gosh, they're like the religious leader. And you can still not be religious because you don't actually have a relationship with him. Religion is about relationship with God. And that was when I, after that conference, I started rereading the Bible and I hadn't read the Bible since I was like 15 years old. And I started rereading the Bible and I re started rereading it with the lens that our God is good. Because every other time that I had read the Bible, I've been like, oh, look, he's punishing people there. He's punishing people here. Like he's mean, he's punitive. Like he is a, you know, uh, as one of my favorite theologians, Lisa Harper puts it, he's a unibrowed librarian who's like pointing his <laughs> finger at you. Like I'm going to strike you down because you like did something wrong, right? That's not our God. Like our God is so good. And the more you're willing to open your heart to the word of the Bible and you're willing to dive into the context and not just take it at the value of like, oh, like, look at what God said here. Like, look what he did to this person here. But you're able to actually understand the original text and the culture and why he said those things and why he did those things. The more you see his goodness and the more your mind is blown. There's another theologian that I don't remember his name, but he says, if you're getting out of the Bible what you expected, you're not, you're not reading the Bible. Like if your expectations <laughs> are being met, you're not, you're not reading the Bible. So I started rereading the Bible. And since then, I 
have just been growing my relationship with God. And once that journey began, I was like, why did I ever, why did I ever look for anything else? Like nothing has been as nourishing. Nothing has been as thirst quenching. Nothing has ever given me this peace. Nothing has ever given me this prosperity, this level of just calm and certainty. And it doesn't mean my life is perfect. Like there's still storms, but I've never felt more empowered and enabled and supported and held in those storms as I do now. Thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, um, I am definitely mindful of your time because I um, am aware that we started late and I know you have other commitments. Um, I would have, I do have um, uh, an ending question for you also, but also I just wanted to add that I still have so many things that I would love to bring to surface for us to discuss um, when it comes to, I don't know, like I feel like a lot of, a lot of the time, like religions could have been, I don't know, potentially, no, not what we want because of what people made it to be. I don't know if that makes sense with like wars and like how women were treated and so on and so on. And I feel like this could be like such a beautiful conversation to be had also. But because I know you have to go, I would love to ask you, um, since you had this like such an expensive and interesting journey when it comes to your faith and um, this might sound a bit weird, but do you think that might be any changes in the future? Do you think you will keep on practicing the way you're practicing? Do you think maybe, I don't know, it's of course it's impossible to say, <laughs> but like, I don't know, what's what's your feelings on it? Like in your future, do you think, do you think you will keep on practicing? Do you think maybe spirituality might not be as important for you later on again? Do you think any, I don't know, anything? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I think now that I'm here, it's like when you, it's like trying, it's like when you've been quenching and you're so thirsty and you've been drinking like lukewarm water your whole life. And then all of a sudden someone gives you like a glass of like the most refreshing, sparkling, ice cold water that you've ever had. And you realize like, oh my gosh, this is what it means to have my thirst actually quenched. And so from that perspective, it's like, I could never go back to the lukewarm water after that. Like there's no going back. There's only going forwards. What I do see changing in the future is I see changing my understanding of the word of God. And and the Bible, specifically like reading the Bible and understanding the deeper layers and understanding like that's what I see changing in the future. So that, of course, like that may at some point change my purpose and the way that I evangelize and the way that I speak about God, because I'll have different understandings contextually and conceptually for who he is through the word that he has given us. That's what I see changing in the future is a deeper understanding through my intimate relationship with him that is happening through my study of his word. So that that is only going to deepen and evolve and to change through prayer, through my personal experiences, through reading the word, through other leaders who have more of a contextual understanding and, and that relationship with God, being able to share their perspective with me. And that's happening right now. So I know. I can say with certainty that that is an inevitability. That's not only like what could change, but what will change as I continue on this path. Wow, that's beautiful. I mean, as I said, so many more um, things to touch on. I feel like it's a, a topic that um, it's very relevant today. And I'm so grateful to educate myself and um, be able to talk to you about it openly and um yeah thank you so much and i'm just sad that it was so short because honestly i would have more questions yeah but i really really appreciate you and i'm so glad to see you so happy and um thank you for your wisdom and time and loving energy
Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much. And we can do it again sometime. It was a pleasure talking to you. I'm super grateful and I'm sending you so much love. Thank you for, for organizing you. and asking. Oh, the main I've been listening, but yeah, genuinely, like that's that's what I wanted to do. I, I really wanted to hear you. You know what I mean? So thank you and, and speak soon. Okay, so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.